Welcome back everybody. Now this is my update number 30 where I go back to 10 past products in order, take a look at the original video and let you know if anything has changed since then. Today's products are number 291 through 300 so let's get started. Number 291 was the Wow Bacon. It's kind of an interesting take on the microwave bacon cooker. I thought it worked quite well. Check it out. It has a couple of clips here. And then you have this rack, which allows you to hold six pieces of bacon that they hang off there in just a cup. So there's really three parts. Rack, lid, cup. They say six slices in four minutes. Just kind of drape it on there like that. It almost looks like you're decorating some sort of like bacon Christmas tree. It's a rack of bacon. All right, now lower it into the cup. How strange. And we're off. It smells like bacon. Push the clips down. Let me see, lift it out. Oh, wow. Oh, it's steaming. Bacon definitely shrunk, but it looks cooked. Yummy bacon grease. All right, and here, here is the final product. Oh, wow, you know what, that's, that's pretty done. Does the folded effect bother you or no? Is it crispy enough? What do you think? Hmm. Now there's definitely differences of opinion of what entails perfect bacon. Some people like it crispier, some people like it flimsier. This is kind of right in the middle. Beside the fact that it's folded over like that, which really isn't that big of a deal to me, it came out perfect. So I've continued to use the Wild Bacon. I've used it several times. It's not warped. There's no significant wear and tear on it. It's just plastic, so I didn't expect much. I guess it doesn't really make a lot of bacon, so if you're making it for a lot of people, it may not be a great choice, but if that doesn't bother you, I still think the Wild Bacon is a good idea. Number 292 is the briefcase barbecue. This is actually a small folding barbecue that folds into the shape of a briefcase. Let's first take a look at how the original review went. All right, now that's a fire. I've got eight coals in here. Great coals on top. So it looks like it holds about two burgers. It doesn't seem like it's just as hot as I would want it to be for a normal grill. Not as quick as a regular grill, that's for sure. Right, these are getting close to being done. I think it took about twice as long as a regular grill. They look pretty good. They just took forever. I'm very confident about this. I put way more coals in there, it's much hotter. I feel good about it. As bad as yesterday went, today is going that well. It was just some small adjustments on my end to make it work properly. Now I feel like I'm legit grilling. Yesterday I was just sitting there babysitting something that wasn't working right. This is grilling. No, there's no G on grilling, it's grilling. All right, I, th I think the first batch is done. They took about as long as a regular grill, no, no slower. So I guess you have enough charcoal power for a couple burgers, maybe a piece of chicken, although the, the charcoals are kind of running out of steam at the end there. I don't know, it's kind of pushing it. So this is something I used a couple of times last summer. Uh, I ended up folding it up, putting it away, and I didn't pull it out again this summer. I think the reason being is because it's kind of on the small side, and I've got four people here that I have to feed. And also, it can be a bit of a pain to clean. I can see how there are a lot of people out there who would like it. It just wasn't something that I found very useful. Number 293 was this interesting USB dishwasher. This is supposed to be an item you stick on the side of your sink and washes your dishes. I didn't really think it worked out so well. Here's some scenes from the original review. Oh, it's, it's spraying. It's getting all over, my, all over the floor. Wow, it's, it's disappearing into the bubbles. So once we have two minutes of agitation, we have one minute of vibration. So according to the instructions, this is supposed to happen. This is a vibration for one minute. Well, that first spoon looks pretty good. Uh, the knife doesn't look terrible, really. Oh no, here we go. Now this has got some crud still on it. Am I confident in this? Absolutely not. But we're off, and we have our 15 minute cycle coming up. It's gonna be interesting to see. Very interesting. They call this the vibratory sound waves. Do you think that actually helps clean? I don't know. I'm not familiar with vibratory sound waves clean. The greasy teriyaki mattis bowl actually doesn't look so bad. Not too bad really. Huh. Okay. Coffee cup still got some stuff in there. The coffee cup's not completely clean. Uh, there's still some stuff in there. And the plate. Need I say more? I don't really feel like this did any better than just 
soaking the dishes in warm soapy water and wiping them off afterwards. I ranked this one number five, my worst of 2020, so I didn't continue to use this. I should also point out there were some people in the comments that thought I was using it wrong. They were thinking of another USB dishwasher that goes in the bottom of the sink. This one, the instructions clearly stated it's supposed to go on the side. Their picture said it's supposed to go on the side. So I really wasn't gonna go against the instructions and stick some cheap electronic device from a no name brand of China in the bottom of my sink full of water. I don't think it would work even if I did do that. So to me, the USB dishwasher was an utter failure and deserving of a place in my bottom five for 2020. Number 294 was a collection of cooling gadgets. Let's take a look back at how the original review went. I'm gonna spray one half with a Surge Cool spray and the other half with water and see what happens. Okay, it feels nice and cool. Has an has a nice menthol smell to it. All right, I've got the sprays on, cooling spray and water. Let's see what happens. All I'm feeling is just a wet shirt, which feels nice, but I don't need to pay for a bottle of something to do that. I can just dump some water myself. I'm not sure if this jacket quite matches my shorts. I'm trying to decide if it feels cooler on the left than on the right. It's pretty close. No, it doesn't feel cooler. No, I'm, I'm not really that impressed. Kind of a next gen version of this, which I did last year. There's something oddly satisfying about the way that folds out to me. I don't know what it is, the metal is quite cold on my neck, but metal would be cold right away. Let's see if it stays cold. Right now, I feel comfortable. Between the coldness on my neck, which is, it's still cold, and the fans blowing in my face, it's, it's not unpleasant. As it gets hotter in here, I'm just feeling warm air blowing across my face. It's, I guess it's better than dead air, but not much. That metal plate, it's actually very cool, so that's a good thing, but it's, it's very wet. It's like sweaty, it's wet. Hey, this is the way to go. You got the double decker. Now we're talking. This is the Flexi Freeze Ice Vest. It looks like some weird solar panel or something, doesn't it? Oh, I feel cold. Oh, it feels cold. That instantly, my body temperature just instantly feel like it dropped. It's a bit awkward to put on, but once you get it on, I mean, I don't feel hot at all. In my monitor here, it looks either like I'm a Walmart employee or I have a bulletproof vest on. But you know, you need, you need some cooling products here. Yeah, I do, I'm feeling a little left out right now. How about a uh, next gen neck fan? A sports coat. <laughs> yeah. Put it on here. There you go. Guinea pig how, today. how about the Arctic hat? Looking good. You are ready to play Frisbee in nice coolness, aren't you? Yeah. All right, I got my ice vest on. We really were set. Let's go. Let's go do it. Now, the spray I ne obviously never used again because it didn't work in the first place. The vest was actually pretty cool, but... It does take up a lot of freezer space and it's not something you can really just kind of use on the fly unless it's in the freezer already. Once the summer ended, I needed the freezer space, put it in the garage, never pulled it out again. I did continue to use the neck fan, not only last year, but this year as well. I compared it to the Arctic Air Freedom and I thought it did a pretty good job. This is actually only 40 bucks now. It's 20 bucks cheaper than I bought it last year. So even though the ice vest was probably the best of all of them, as far as keeping you cool on a hot day goes, to me, the neck fan was probably the most practical. Number 295 are these interesting USB rechargeable batteries. Now, what's unique about these is that they actually have a USB port built right into the battery. Let's first take a look and see how the original video went. I've got these six batteries, all six of these pegged in the green for this battery tester. So this shall be at least somewhat equal. Let's see how the three USB batteries compare to three kind of randomly selected other batteries. All three of the fans with the USB batteries died and all three of the others are still going. A very impressive showing here from the cheap Duracell knockoff. New or old, they still destroy the USB rechargeables. Next up, I wanted to try out the AAA batteries. I tried those against uh, a TAC light. I've got these brand new Duracell rechargeable batteries. USB AAA batteries, freshly charged, I might say. All right, here we go. USB batteries, Duracell batteries. It's only been about 40 minutes and the USB battery already conked out. Look at this, not dead. Rechargeable Duracell is still going strong. And what I wanted to do now is quickly recreate those tests since they've had a few months of use. They've had quite a few charging cycles. At the 207 mark, two of them are out, just like last time. 210 mark, almost the same results as last time. All three USB batteries, unimpressive. Even though they didn't work very well, I continued to use these as long as I could, but both types of batteries eventually stopped holding the charge completely. I would say I got about three to four months of use out of them before they were completely useless. I like the idea, I just don't think in these cases they were implemented very well. Mm -hmm. 
Number 296 is the ShamWow mask. That's right, an as seen on TV mask. What else would you expect in 2020? Let's first take a look and see how the original video went. I love how they put the logo right across the front. So you're gonna be telling everybody you have a ShamWow mask. The material looks pretty similar. This is an unused ShamWow, never been used. On the other side, it's supposed to be a cotton liner. It feels nice and soft. I had it on less than a second and this tag was already bothering me. That tag's gotta go. Well, it's a large mask. What's up with the logo right there? Come on, man. Well, it feels comfortable. I'll, I'll give them that. And uh, it's it's a nice size mask and the ear bands aren't very tight. 15 bucks a piece for these? I don't know. You know, initial impression is pretty good. I hate the logo in the front there. Why would they put that there? That's so cheesy. Come on now. Oh, we've got a pretty close approximation of the ShamWow mask in the original ShamWow. All right, it's mostly done dripping. It's about a quarter of a cup. Let's try the mask. It's actually pretty close. I, I'm actually a little bit surprised. All right, so here we go. Real world test with the ShamWow mask. So the ShamWow mask has been my, one of my backup masks since uh, I did that video. I don't really like the color very much when I go in there and just bright orange. It's just, I don't really like it that much. It's held up pretty well. That's kind of how it looked uh, at the end of my last video after washing it a few times. It seems like it did shrink just a little bit as well. Right now I just leave my glove box in my car in case I forget my normal mask. It's certainly fine, but I really didn't like the color very much. Other than the color, it did work pretty well. Number 297 was a collection of pet hair removers. Now with a golden retriever in the house, this is something that's vital to me. Here's a look back at how the original review went. This is the pet wedge. Does this even qualify as a brush? I don't know. This looks more like one of those stones you use in the shower. We gotta get all the cushions nice and messed up. Oh, wow. Bailey, that's yours. Oh wait, you gotta get it off there though. Well, that's not good. But you can also get in the cracks here like this. That's kind of nice. They say in short strokes. And they say it also used to, from different angles too. Oh wow, this works pretty good. Oh yeah, look at this. Did they just repurpose one of those stones you're supposed to rub on your feet in the shower or something? Are you gonna move Bailey? Are you gonna move Bailey? <laughs> Yeah. It gets to the point where it's not grabbing it. I can feel there's a roughness to it. And then when I get a lot of hair, it kind of gets, starts getting smooth almost. Now what I like about this one is it doesn't stick to it, so you, can, you don't have to stop and pull the hair off. I think the furs off has got the hairiest part of the floor too, so it's maybe a little bit unfair. Huh. I'm not real impressed with the, uh, the pet wedge on the shirt. I think the lily brush is working better on the shirt. Ooh, that doesn't feel good on material. <laughs> I feel like that's gonna like rip, rip the material. No way, man. You hear that? I'm gonna say no. I think the lily brush better on the shirt. The pet wedge seems to leave some streaks in here. I feel like the lily brush did a little bit better. All right, first section, this is the pet wedge. In the middle, we have the lily brush. And on this side, we have the furs off. I think the lily brush and the furs off, pretty much a tie. Now I've got a lot of pet hair removers around the house, but the lily brush is probably the one of those three that I use the most. The furs off I did like, but I'm always afraid that that rough material is gonna actually damage whatever I'm cleaning. So I haven't used that one as much. Of all the pet hair removers that I currently have, I would say the one I use the most is probably this Furwell knockoff of the Chom Chom Roller. This one actually works quite well. I actually got it as a freebie when I reviewed their pet room. I don't think the Furwell's even sold anymore, but I would go with a Chom Chom Roller if you're looking for a really good pet hair remover. Number 298 was this interesting tape measure called the Rollova. Let's first take a look and see how the original video went. Press the button and roll. I'll go right to 12 inches. That was spot on. 
spot on. All right, I'm pretty close to eight and a half. Forty, and it says about a half. So maybe about a quarter of an inch off. Twenty and five eighths. Twenty and five eighths. So my string technique and the rollover agree. Exactly 42 inches. Exactly 42 inches. Right to the edge of the table. 41 and 51 64ths, which I think that's pretty close to 42. But as it turns out, you cannot use the rollover under freezing or above 95 degrees Fahrenheit or 35 degrees Celsius. If you wanted to measure, for example, the painting on my wall, which I can't reach the top of it, I can slide the top of the tape measure up there to get a pretty close, accurate measurement of the top of the painting. I can't even reach it. I'd have to go get a step stool and slide it down the wall like that. It's, there are instances where you have to have the tape measure extended beyond your reach. This one, you're limited to what your reach is. I think maybe the biggest con is that this costs 80 bucks. So as cool as the rollover looks, I just it, it's something that has too many flaws for me to continue to use very much. Let me give you an example. Let's say I want to measure the edge of this table to that wall over there. Tape measure. Sixty-five inches. If I want to do the same thing with a roll of it, I would have to do it on the ground, and I don't even think it's going to roll on this carpet. There's too many instances like this where the roll of it just doesn't work. I mean, it might be fine for going around a corner or a circular object, but to me, this does not beat a normal tape measure. Number 299 was a comparison of the Bark Box and the Pup Box. These are both dog box services. Let's first take a look at how the original review went. Let's open up the Pup Box first. And I'm not even Bailey, I'm impressed by this. Wow. Let's take a look at the Bark Box. Dr. Seuss looking instructions. I, I, I kind of like it. Peanut butter carob. That sounds good to me. I don't suppose people can eat these, right? This actually turns into a ball. Bailey heard the squeak. All right, let me go with this. Hold on, Bailey. So we've got the squeaky toy from the Bark Box and the old firecracker from the Pub Box. All right, here she goes. She's sniffing. She just she just ran off with the uh, the Bark Box squeak toy. This one's supposedly converts into a ball. Let me try that. And there she goes. I'm trying to chew off that end. Oh, she's trying to tear it up. Bailey, don't do that. She took it very gently. Oh, where's she going? Where's she going? I don't think she wants me to actually watch her eating this. Pretty ragged after 24 hours. For the Pup Box Firecracker, she seemed very compelled to want to tear the stuffing out of this one. She was on the couch yesterday, just gnawing away at it and, and really trying to actually tear it open. Go get it. I ended up going with the Bark Box over the Pup Box, although I think they were both very good. In fact, I'm still subscribed to the Bark Box. Let's take a look at how the Bark Box toys I've gotten over the past year. All right, this is the Bailey Boneyard here. This is uh, a lot of the products from Bark Box over the last year. Not all of them, because she's uh, she tends to play with them a lot. She's got one in her mouth right now. What do you got? But this is uh, this is pretty much it. I usually cycle through these. She she plays with some, put them away for a while, play with others. Of course, now she likes me pulling this box out. What's in there? She likes the crinkly ones. The crinkle like that, crinkle and squeak, that's her favorite. Some of these harder ones, this, the super chewers, she didn't like as much. She never really played with those. This is one of her favorites. She loves the crinkle. I have to also point out that over the last year, I've actually written to BarkBox a couple of times with questions about my orders. They're always very responsive. A lot of times they offer to send me a free toy. So their customer service is top notch. I'm actually quite a big fan of the BarkBox and so is Bailey. Mm. 
Number 300 is the Sidetrack. This is actually an interesting second monitor that goes on the back of your laptop. Let's first take a look at the original video. I'm supposed to peel off the backing stickers, center on the laptop, and press down for 30 seconds. So this is what it looks like. It looks kind of like, a, kind of like an Etch-a-Sketch with these four things in there. I hope if I don't like this, this comes off as easily as it goes on. Oh. Oh, oh. Whoa, wait a second. Oh, wait, I got to peel this off. So normally when I'm editing my videos on the road, I've got just, just this monitor here and I have this tiny preview screen, but if I could do this, see now we are talking, that's amazing. All right, so like over here, I got, uh, I got a video playing on YouTube on this side. I'm taking a look at three different pet hair removers. And I can, I can browse on Amazon this side. So far, I'm a little bit impressed. I do like the fact that you can adjust it this way. Now it's only a 12 and a half inch screen now, and so next to my 17 inch monitor, it looks, kind of, it looks kind of small. So it's kind of a junior second monitor rather than just an equal monitor. And as far as thickness goes, it's about, oh, about a half an inch thick. You can slide it all the way out. And all the way over. And then instead of extending your screen, you can duplicate your screen so the person on the other side can see what you're doing. So when you have your screen duplicated instead of extended, I can see this screen and you on the other side can see the same thing. The biggest con is that it's 300 bucks and that is gonna dissuade some people from picking this up. So the sidetrack is something I kind of use on and off whenever I'm editing video on my laptop, which isn't too often, I usually attach this, plug it in and I'll have two monitors. If I'm just using social media or regular websites, I kind of take it off because it's kind of heavy. It kind of makes my laptop a bit top heavy when it's open. But after one year, I've actually think sidetracks held up quite well. Well, that's it. This was a pretty good collection of products. I would say the one I use the most of all these is probably the Bark Box because I still get my monthly subscription box every month and Bailey still likes it. The one I use the least has got to be the USB dishwasher. I'll never use that one again. It wasn't, it wasn't good the first time. Since this is my 30th update, it's kind of a nice round number. I thought it might be fun to go back and look at all 30 of my original update videos and see how those intros have changed over the years. So let's do that and then wrap this thing up. Today I want to give you an update on the first 10 products that I reviewed on this channel. Today I'm going to give you updates on the 11th through the 20th products that I reviewed. Today I'm going to give you updates on the 21st through the 30th products I reviewed here on Frequent Reviews. Today I'm going to give updates on the 31st through the 40th products that I reviewed here on Frequent Reviews. Today I'm doing products number 41 through 50, so let's get right to it. Today I'm going to give you updates on the 51st through 60th products I've updated here. All right, so today I'm going to take a look back at the 61st through the 70th products I've reviewed here on Frequent Reviews. Today I'm giving you updates on products number 71 through 80 that I've reviewed here on Frequent Reviews, so let's get started. All right, so today I'm doing a recap and update of products number 81 through 90 I've done here in Freakin' Reviews, so let's get started. All right, today, so I'm giving you updates on products number 91 through 100 that I've reviewed here at Freakin' Reviews, so let's get started. And today I'm giving you one of my update videos. This is where I recap and update you on 10 past products that I've reviewed. All right, this is products number 111 through 120 that I reviewed here on Freakin' Reviews. Today I'm going to give you an update and a recap. Today I'm giving you recaps and updates of the 121st through the 130th products I reviewed here at Freak Interviews. Today I'm giving you an update and recap video of 10 past products that I reviewed, numbers 131 through 140. So today I'm doing items number 141 through 150. So without further ado, items number 151 through 160 right now. Today is the 161st through the 170th products that I reviewed. Today I'm doing number 171 through 180. So without further delay, let's get right to update number 19. This is my 20th update video now. And today is the 21st of those where I take 10 past products in order and let you know if I'm still using them or not. This is my 22nd installment of my update videos. This is my 23rd update video. This is my 24th update video. Welcome back everybody. Now today is my update number 25. Welcome back everybody. Now today is update number 26. This, this is update number 27. Update 27. Update number 27. Update number 27. This is my 28th update video. Welcome back everybody. Now today I'm taking a look at my 29th update video. Welcome back everybody. Now this is my update number 30 where I go back to 10 past products in order, take a look at the original video and let you know if anything has changed since then. All right, I'll be back in about another month with another update video. Until then, I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.